And for two points of view, because we like bipartisanship in the news side as well, we have Ajay Alok of the JDU here in the studio and uh, the BJP Sudanshu Trivedi. Ajay Alok, uh, you know, you were listening very, very intently to that speech. Is there any point of criticism? Uh, as an Indian politician, leave alone your opposition hat, how would you rate that speech? Well, first of all, I would like to congratulate the Prime Minister today because today it was a historic day when the eldest democracy is meet, meeting with largest democracy sure. and he was representing the largest democracy of the world. And he was putting up his point of view, his perspective of what India believes that US should act into. That was a perfect presentation and as far as there was Baruf was saying that uh, we are not conversant with English, it was, that is defied way beyond when Rajiv Gandhi spoke also. So that is not that all Indians cannot speak, but yes, Prime Minister gave an impeccable speech, no doubt about it. Sure. And would like to congratulate the Prime Minister because he's my Prime Minister, is the Prime Minister of this country and well, he has raised the flag high. Absolutely. I think a sense of pride that are, I counted there, Sudanshu Trivedi, eight standing ovations, right? And 66 clapping interventions. Now, these things are not forced. It's genuine, Maruf, you're right. Eight standing ovations and 66, 66 uh, clapping inter, in, interventions in the course of a speech clearly tells us, Maruf, it's very well received. That there was a spontaneous reception to his speech and the tone that he was setting during it, Maruf. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, absolutely, Ornab. I, I mean, uh, let me one, uh, just correct, uh, uh, you know, uh, a point that was just made. Uh, I didn't, I didn't uh, in any way try to dismiss uh, Mr. Modi's uh, English uh, fluency. I said for somebody who doesn't necessarily have English as his first language, he's done us all proud with a flawless extempo performance. Uh, I think that's a great compliment. Uh, and he has conveyed yeah. all the points in the right way, yeah. uh, in the right manner, without uh, just... showing any element of anger, pettiness, or any, uh, any kind of political incorrectness, if I was to use the term. Uh, I think what is more important, and it is not very often yeah. uh, that uh, a leader from India would get across the board repeated standing ovations uh, clearly, U.S.-India relations have turned the corner now. Uh, there is a recognition in the U.S. that we have arrived late, but yeah. we are a country that they can clearly bank on yeah. in the coming century. Absolutely. There is too much synergy between the two countries. Yeah. You like the United States, as I've always said, India more than anything else, like the U.S., is an idea. And the idea of India is very similar to the idea of America. Mr. Modi talked about not just having the franchise to vote every five years, but also to live in freedom and away from fear. So every citizen in India enjoys yeah, I, freedom every day of the year. Yeah. Of course, there will no, be people think, who will question that. But I think it's a point well made. Yeah, you and know, I, think, I think most importantly, Ornab, he did touch the right chord with the Americans by saying this is the country that you have to do business with. Yeah, yeah. There are 800 million young Indians below 35. There is an entrepreneur drive in India which cannot be matched anywhere in the world. This is your potential biggest partner and not just a military partner, but your biggest economic partner in the next century. Yeah. So wake up and abandon those who have you let know, you, you down. Know, you know, Maru. And I think that message should go very clearly yeah. to countries in India's neighborhood yeah. who have betrayed the trust the Americans put on them. Yeah. You know, Maru, I remember when, when, when Prime Minister Modi first went in 2014, you and I were in Washington and New York as part of that coverage. And, and what I find if I were to compare Modi then and Modi now is that he's clearly talking about his priorities. He says, leave your Cold War baggage behind. Right. We must overcome the hesitation of history, he says. I think that was very, very finely articulated. But what I absolutely love today was his strong emphasis on terror. You see, in every speech, every prime minister or leader uses this kind of an opportunity to make one critical point. And viewers, that's what I want to say. Modi today sent out a clear message that terror by any other name is as big a threat to India and the world. Now, this is a very important message because America has had a kid glove approach to the Pakistani sponsored terror against India versus America. American interest. So he goes to the US Congress and in the US Congress before the Americans without naming Pakistan Maruf, 
He makes it clear that Pakistan is the global epicenter of terrorism. He does not shy away from naming the ISIS, the LET and the Taliban in his speech. Without naming Pakistan, Prime Minister Modi sends out a bold message to the US by effectively telling their Congress, pull back your aid to Pakistan. Maruf, I think that is what he was saying. Pull back because of their lackadaisical Tet approach to terror. I think when he said don't reward sponsors of terrorism, that's when he made it as clear as possible. And we're happy that we have a prime minister who speaks this language. Because when you get an opportunity like this, you don't go there to give a wishy-washy namby-pamby speech. This is as straightforward a speech as there could have been. And that is what makes this speech truly unique. Viewers, remember, without naming Pakistan, Prime Minister Modi has reached out in the US Congress to Americans and says that India-US ties must deepen strategically in a way that, quote-unquote, isolates those who harbor and sponsor terrorism. In other words, he's saying, we work together, let's isolate Pakistan till it improves. Very important message for all those people who are critical of Modi's foreign policy. Today will be a moment where they'll have to reflect back and ask themselves who has delivered a speech as clear as this one. Now, you're smiling and smirking as usual. Ajay Alok, let's get Sudhanshu in and then come back to you on what you find difficult with my observations. Yes, please. Sudhanshu Trivedi. Sudhanshu Trivedi. I don't, I don't I, you know, I, you, I, I know thought you, you began by saying me. let's be bipartisan about it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Sudhanshu Trivedi, please. Sudhanshu. <laughs> Uh, actually, if you look at the entire speech of Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, he has shown that now he has established himself as a global leader and a statesman. Yeah. And the stature which we have witnessed in the US Congress, it gives a um, sense of pride to every Indian. And also it shows the clout of India which has now emerged in the global scenario. If you go by the content of the speech, as we have already said, he has uh, covered all sort of subjects from science and technology to culture, from terrorism to peacekeeping force, from climate change yeah. to other related things, yeah. from our involvement in Afghanistan to a reference towards Pakistan. And also, if you remember, he has also mentioned the free navigational lines. It means there was also uh, some indication towards China. So he has put an all-encompassing yes, there was an indication full of to China. content which can be termed as yeah. an ocean in a nutshell yeah. which we have a proverb in Hindi that is Gagar mein Sagar bhar diya. So I, I don't see. think any element which was required Shanshuji. both in terms of content Shanshuji, and delivery question, and what was uh, missing the manner in, the in which he has put forth hmm. and that's the why The basic question what was missing in this speech that the Indian line is an American line I do not accept to it and I hope that's a being no, why did he say Indian line is American line? Like what Farooq was going right now, that Indian line is an American line, American line is an Indian no, line. No, he didn't say that. Excuse no, no, Maruf, 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 Maruf didn't Maruf. say that. No, no, Maruf the didn't say that. No, Maruf didn't say that. This Maruf didn't say we're towing the line. This is absolutely American contradictory. Line is this is absolutely contradictory. No. Because still now what India has gained position. No, no, he didn't say that. Not Maruf didn't say that. No, no, I'm saying. No, no, but Maruf I'm, didn't say I'm that. I'm trying to tell something different. No, no, but you are by saying Maruf. Maruf, Sanab, can I answer? By echoing everything on the on the Americans line, we do not come to no, a we're place. We're not echoing we anything. To here. the contrary, I don't think this is echoing anything. Everything on the American line. This is telling the Americans what no, they I'm might sorry. find uncomfortable. I'm sorry. I'm that that they are I still think, dealing with Pakistan. I think Maruf objects to your interpretation. Maruf, one minute. I'm coming now, but Maruf, respond. Doctor Ajay Alok, I would like to say if you are saying that we are trying to tow the American line, I would like to remind after Sri Narendra Modi government came in the month of September 2014 in Bali we have firmly opposed the WTO proceedings uh, which was uh, somehow yeah. succumbed by you the previous WTO? government and still we are having you this place type education of, uh, on WTO. Welcome, this is the biggest failure of the government in, America. in the same Sanjay manner if you remember talking? in our previous you are the first government in this independent India who has placed education and our basic necessity in WTO you have made a w education uh, as a trade subject which so we have maintained good relationship, but we firmly the about no, 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 our no. national interest. No, 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 I, no, no. I, I think, I think, I think there was also Maruf wanted to respond to you. What I liked today, Maruf, was the sense of humor. If you ask me today, it feels good, right? When you have a prime minister who can, who, who says we also have a sense of humor, have a few laughs at the Americans and a laugh set at, at ourselves. I think it loosened things up a bit. I love the moment, Maruf. I love that one moment when he says that I know that you reflect, uh, you have a harmonious political 
you know, situation and you reflect the spirit of bipartisanship and he went on and, and said... we share the spirit. He said, we share the spirit, we have a common experience, especially in the upper house. Now, I think that was great because it got an immediate connect and it, it sort of loosened up the audience. Can I play that, Maru, before I come back to you? Because so much is said about how there needs to be a personal connect with every world leader. I, I found that part very, very interesting. It was good to see Modi in a little bit of a lighter mood there in the US Congress. Let's hear that. Mr. Speaker, I'm informed that the working of the US Congress is harmonious. <laughs> I am also told that you are well known for your bipartisanship. <laughs> well, you are not alone. <laughs> Time and again, I have also witnessed a similar spirit in the Indian Parliament. <laughs> Especially in Upper House. <laughs> so, as you can see, we have many shared practices. <laughs> as I was as I was seeing that, Maruf, I was thinking that had he said something similar in the Indian in the Indian Parliament, given the present situation, there would have been a walkout. <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, I think that was great and loosen things uh, up. No, a lot. I would like yeah, to yes, say Yes, Sudhanshu yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hey, no, I would Gandhi like to say there are some there, more coincidental similarities or not, or not. Yes. between yeah. India and US. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some uh, coincidental similarities which is designed by destiny. You remember, the America was discovered by Columbus by accident when he was on way to India. Yeah, yeah. So in my opinion, there is a connect between India and America right from the point of the discovery of America. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, yes, Maruf, I so, think you wanted to so come in on the... So whatever Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi was saying. Yeah, yeah. Maruf, I think you wanted to... And moreover... Yeah. Onab. Yeah. Yeah, Maruf. Onab. Yeah, Onab, I just want to make a couple of quick points. Uh, on a lighter note, in yeah. the 50s, if you said to somebody that you were an Indian, uh, and, and, you know, some American ladies in the social circle would ask you, where are your feathers? Assuming that you were saying that you are a red Indian. Because they didn't know India well enough then. But I think today, being Indian, and as Mr. Modi also indicated, with 3 million Indians in the United States, uh, very much pushing for the partnership with India, also got uh, Mr. Modi an ovation when he brought up the 3 million Indians who have made a mark in American society. But I want to go back to one or two uh, points that were raised against what I said. Let us, let us be a little real. Yeah. The real turning point in Indo-US relations began in 2005. It didn't happen in the time of Vajpayee. It happened in the time of President Bush starting to engage with the UPA-1 government. Now, the UPA-1 government, if they are now blaming Mr. Modi for towing the American line, I'd like an answer that what was it, the great wisdom that Mr. Manmohan Singh saw in a partnership with the United States that he put his whole prime ministership to stake yeah. and decided to seek a vote of confidence yeah. if the relationship and the Indo-Nuclear 1-2-3 agreement didn't go through. But Maru, Obviously, you notice, there was merit in it then no, and no, there no. is merit in no, it no, now. I th I th I think and the another same great people attribute. who pushed the... No, please no, no. hear me out, Arnab. Yeah, okay, and the go, same go, people go, who... Go, no, go, I want, what I want to say, yeah. Arnab, I want to make a very important point. Yeah, go the same people, the same people who pushed that deal then we shot ourselves in the foot by getting a nuclear liability law which today makes it impossible for American companies to enter India to True. do nuclear trade. True. And therefore, the, the task for the Modi government 
is more uphill than it yeah. would have been for anybody else. Yeah. Also, yeah. the you, opposition you to the you Lingua, yeah. the military engagement uh, arrangement I mean, Mr. is based yeah, on this, assumptions the, that we are giving away Indian territory. The there was already the same government there was already which opposed to uh, Ken uh, in 2008-9 during the nuclear deal. America. What Manmohan the Singh only thing was government for. The, oh, no, no, sir. Just hear me out. Yes, hear me out. Today, what they're they're doing? the entire Lemo arrangement, a has even been, now, has been, been signed. Has been and this arrangement, and and this arrangement has been in say. place. If this arrangement has been in place for more than I, five I, years, I'll tell you, not ten say years. You turn so don't say, government. don't no. just say that the Modi government is selling out India. Everyone, everyone, every government in Delhi works in India's interest. If it doesn't suit your political narrative, that's your problem. And Maru, may I add one, one thing to that? In the larger context of India's interest. I think we need to look at what Modi is trying to achieve. Modi is trying to achieve a step forward towards the UN Security Council. Modi tried to achieve getting India into the missile technology control regime and he managed Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Modi is trying to achieve to secure India's membership in the, in the nuclear suppliers group. Right? And he's trying to make a pitch on terrorism. I think two points that I want to make before I wrap up tonight. First, Modi was not taking personal credit for the Indo-US relationship. He said, if you notice in the subtext of his speech, he said that this relationship has endured and gone beyond elections and changes of administrations and changes of government. I think that's as bipartisan non-partisan a character to any prime ministerial speech this was not about creating personal glory for himself i think that point has not been given enough emphasis I, another point i liked which i really wrapped up with and, and i'll mention i praise him for that that yeah, the yeah. increase and in the trade yeah. has happened in the last decade yeah and so that has also given credit to the previous government and i think sudan should praise him for that i'm glad i'm glad at least on this channel i'm glad that at least on this channel we have today both the opposition, the government and Maruf agreeing on the fact that this is a historic now speech. I, would like to say I think it would, be wrong. it would be wrong to, to, to look at this in points of who won and who lost. I think the part where everybody liked also was where he says we don't take intellectual copyright or intellectual property rights on yoga. That got a good laugh. I think the tone was excellent. I think the mood was upbeat. And I think he was making a very serious pitch to members of uh, all of America's lawmakers on the partnership ahead. I think this is a speech which will be remembered in some Arnav, time. Arnav, what we have seen in the U.S. Congress, I would like to say that Modi Ji has shown that in one thing, that he has seen 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 that कर रहा है विश्व भी नम, हमको नमन उस पार से वो दिखाई पड़ा है आज पूरे विश्व को और हमें हर भारतीय को इस पे गर्व होना चाहिए वेल वेल थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सुधांशु त्रिवेदी थैंक यू अजय गुड टू सी यू एंड मारूफ फॉर ज्वाइनिंग मी